So I'm very glad to see everyone here. Uh, so what we're going to do, obviously, it's a performance class, so we're going to perform. And it's very informal. I don't want anyone to feel like they're under a lot of pressure. I want you to play through whatever piece you're going to play today. And then first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you, whoever performed, what you liked about your performance and two things that you think you would like to do differently in, in, in what you play. Two things you didn't like. And I'll give them, we'll, after that, we'll go around the room um, and everyone just make a comment, you know. One constructive uh, criticism and something you liked, you know, just just two basic comments. Um, and if you don't want to make a comment, you can always say pass, yeah. And then I'll obviously give you a few things that I thought about your performance, and then we'll we'll, we'll just go on from there. Sounds good. All right, all right. Let's get started. So, Apollo. Uh, so I guess everyone mute their their microphone until until we finish, and then we'll we'll go around. So whenever you're ready, Paulo, take it away. Thank <laughs> you. 
It's it's made of a lot of lot of improvement. Um, so, what did you like, and what would you maybe have done differently about your performance? Um, I liked um, like. like what, what parts did you think went well? Like, oh, you know, I liked my sound. I felt very relaxed. What, what, just give a couple of things. I like the like second entrance. Yeah, I thought it was very good. Okay. Anything else? Um How did you feel overall? Did you feel nervous? Did you feel uh comfortable? Yeah. You seem very comfortable. Honestly, you seem, you know, you never seem to get very nervous when you play. Um good. Now, anything that you wish you could have done differently? Anything you would have changed? Um any place specifically where it's like, oh, that could have been cleaner, intonation, anything like that? The um, fourth entrance was, um, there was some good power out of tune, I guess. Uh, fourth entrance, is that the, uh, play me, what's the beginning, is that the, yeah. that one? Yeah, okay, all right, so that's something we can talk about. Um, honestly, I thought you played very beautifully. Why don't we, why don't we throw it out to everyone right now and just get a couple comments from everybody and then I'll, I'll give you my, my thoughts. Let's start with Nolan. I thought it was overall very good. I think there are a few parts where it could have been a little bit cleaner with both strokes, but like the dynamics and all the shifts were all very, very good. You're muted. All right. Um, now, when you say bow strokes, can you be a little more specific? You mean like string crossings? Uh, uh, yeah. Combination with the left and the right hand? I think there are a few string crossings when he went from like the A to G and C and stuff okay. where it caught the D a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Thank you. Yeah. That that's very good. So let's let's keep that in mind. Thanks, Nolan. All right. Uh, Ozan, you have anything you like to say? Um. I guess you looked really calm, and I think that's pretty cool because you know I generally can't perform and be calm at the same time. So I thought that was really piece overall was really good. Um. I guess one thing would be some of the notes could be a bit cleaner in parts, I guess, but overall it was really good. Mm -hmm. That's actually one thing we can talk about is nerves, right? So, you know, obviously Paul is very comfortable performing. You know, maybe we can ask him what he does, you know, because he, he is very calm. Now, let me take care of one thing. Uh, one second. Okay, so everyone, so Shalika actually has to, she has to leave, so, um, 
let's all wave goodbye to Shalika and so thank you for coming. <laughs> all right. Bye. All right, Shalika. Thank you for being here. I'll see you later. Thank you for coming. I'll see okay. you on Tuesday. All right, let's let's keep going. Uh, thank you, Ozan. Sean, do you have anything you want to say? Uh, I mean, I don't know. I thought it was really good. One thing that I noticed, this is like, it's like you seem to seem to be really confident because I could tell you were like, you were like, like when you put your fingers down, it was really like decisive. And uh, there were some, I think there might have been some intonation things with the, with the like double stops, but I'm but like, but like, but like, but like they were mostly really good. And I noticed that you, you seem to, you seem to correct them well. Good, good. All right. Thank you, Sean. Yeah, actually the double stop is some, has been something we've been trying to work on. That's, those are really, really tough. Um, good. All right. Thank you, Sean. Let's go on to Lila. You want to say something? Um, overall, I thought it was really, really good. Um, uh, one piece of evidence, or not evidence, sorry. I would probably say that like some of the notes were a little bit flat, but overall I thought it was really, really good. So, good job. Thank you, Lila. Thank you. All right, let's, let's bring it back to Apollo. So, um, overall, and I, I, you know, it's really made a lot of improvements. The tempo was honestly good to go. Um, you weren't rushing, which was great. Um, and it made everything honestly a lot, it was a lot more clean. Um, so let, let's talk about a couple of, those, of the spots people were mentioning. Um, Apollo, maybe could you start from, let's not go from the beginning. Let's try the second entrance in C minor. again was because this is I think it's the hardest entrance in the, in the entire piece w what do you think mm. I mean intonation wise it's very difficult I mean you have all these semi double stops as you're playing with this you know obviously you're breaking them up but what would you do to practice the intonation here I would like do them as like the um, I would play those as um, chords, maybe. Good. That's that's definitely that's definitely one way to go about it. Now, one thing I would suggest is nothing beats slow practice. Um, honestly, just running through really, really slow. Um, let's. Can we try once just the passage at a slower tempo, just from here? <laughs> Maybe even slow, maybe about, maybe about that tempo. Okay, so all right, so here we gotta be careful with this fifth, with uh, especially with the on the D string. You gotta make sure your middle finger is just a little bit higher. Can you try that again? Can you play it as a double stop once? Can you start one more time? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
issues we were talking about in the last couple le lessons were way, way improved. Have you been practicing with the metronome? Um, yeah. Yeah, honestly, well, the, the tempo is much better. Um, I still want you to keep working on the double stop section in the third, the third entrance. Like we were talking about the last lesson, practicing with separate notes, right? Keeping the double stop but just practicing it string by string. Because overall, your fourth finger is in tune, right? The G and the A flat. Where you have to be careful is just the first finger, making sure you're getting your, your, your first finger high enough. Can we try that one more time? We're not gonna spend a whole lot of time working. Um, so we're just gonna, let's work a little bit on these double stops and then we'll have, um, we'll bring someone in next to play. Can we try this once? Let's try it once again, keeping the double stop shape, but working on just the D string for now. Okay, what you just played, where was the intonation problem there? There was one note that, that was actually coming back to the G, a little too low. Let's try one more time. Oh, that's much better. Now let's try the A string. Second time was much better. Try one more time. That's better. Can we try it all together? That's much, much, much better. And careful as well not to accent the top E flat. Remember, we want this to be as graceful as possible. Just very, right? We don't want to, you don't want a constant on the beginning of that note. That's much better, right? The harmony is a lot more clear. So keep working in this regards. Um, like I said, otherwise, it's very, very nice. Um, let me just see where everyone, I can't see everyone right now. Hold on. All right, good. All right, so look, you're sounding beautiful. Um, you did a really nice job. Uh, why, don't we, why don't we get someone else in here to play? So who wants... Who wants to volunteer? Lila, you want to play? Okay. All right, Lila, it is. All right, let's give everyone give uh, Apollo a round of applause. Great job, Apollo. Really, really, really nice job. Okay. All right, Lila, take it away. Thank you. 
change the way the cello feels, right? That's something we often don't um, experience until we actually play in front of people, you know, and we don't, we don't get the chance to do that very often. So that's exactly what these classes are designed for, right? To play in front of an audience. And it gives you a good idea of where you're at with whatever piece you're learning, right? Because sometimes in the practice room, things feel good, right? You know, sounds great, you know, shifting feels comfortable, you know, beautiful vibrato. But, you know, all of a sudden, the pressure comes and those spots where you're not as maybe 100% sure of, they kind of come through more. You see what I mean? Like some of the spots where, again, in the practice room, they feel comfortable and in front of an audience, not so comfortable. So what, what did you feel, what did you like about what you did? Um, I felt like the first quarter was pretty good, but then once I like messed up the first time, it started going downhill. Why, why do you think that is? What, did you get nervous? Um, because once I messed up, my nerves started rising, and then I was like nervous throughout the rest of the piece. Right. So. You know, I've, I've had that happen before too. So, <laughs> that you, you know, it's, it's a common, it's a common feeling. Um, all right. What, what, what didn't you like? What, what did you like? What do you think could have, could have gone better? Um, the shifting in the last line of the first page and the first line of the second page. Okay, so any of those shifts to, to, to any of the higher positions here, like what was it? Um, okay, those are I think my notes were off by a lot. <laughs> What'd you say? Um, I think my notes were off by some bit, like they weren't in tune. Well, well, we'll work on that, right? There's, there's obviously solutions to all these things, right? And it's not easy. This is difficult. Um, thank you, Lila. Let's 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 throw it around to everybody and let's get some comments. Um, Apollo, do you want to say something? 
Actually, I can't see Apollo right now. I can only see, okay, Apollo, would you like to give a couple comments? Um, it was pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, is there anything, any suggestions you would give to Lila as far as um, uh, ways? She, she talked about shifting. You know, we've, we've talked a lot about shifting. What would you tell her to help her um, with those spots? Um, you just have to do them slowly over and over again. Yeah, right. Now, what about when you're shifting to a higher position? What's some... You know, for example, you're trying to find a C here. How do you go about finding that note? Yes, right. Use that A harmonic, right? Think in position. It's super important. Really, you, know, you never want to feel like you're flying blind when you're shifting, right? I mean, there's an element of just relax, shift, get yourself up there. But you want, want to have some anchor point that's going to give you, you know, just some frame of reference when you're kind of shooting your way up, up, up to the top of the fingerboard. Good. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Apollo. Let's let's go to Nolan. You got anything you'd like to say? I think that overall it was pretty good. I think you probably could have shaped the dynamics a bit better. Okay. Good. Dynamics. Along with the, when you shift it, I think you probably need to be a little bit higher on most of them. All right. Good, good. Yeah, you know what? I agree. I think that dynamics is something we usually don't consider until, you know, that's kind of like the last thing we consider when we're learning something. Right? Yeah. yeah we'll, we'll talk about that. All right, good. Thank, thank you, Nolan. Uh, Sean, want to want to give a couple comments? Uh, yeah. I thought, I thought it was pretty good. Um, the, uh, the intonation was really, I felt like it was mostly pretty good, except for like, the hard parts yeah. but you know that's just like that's just like a practice thing so yeah. that'll yeah no absolutely I mean, that'll come right. yeah but um yeah but i agree with uh with uh nolan about about the like with the, like dynamics it kind of felt a little to me like it was just sort of one tone throughout and it just really like will enhance the performance and make it make it like more fun Good. when you let me add a little bit of different stuff yeah. in there. Um, great comments, really great comments. I mean, that's, that's another thing with dynamics. Often we don't hear um, what the audience hears, right? The dynamics to us might seem like we're doing enough, but when it's never enough. You always got to do more um, with, with showing the differences between, you know, your softer dynamics and, and your louder dynamics. All right, good. Thank you, Sean. Really, really good comments. Let's do uh, Ozon. Do you want to say something? Uh, yeah. Overall, I thought it was pretty good. Um, I thought it was like a pretty clean sound, and overall, the intonation seemed pretty good. Um, I suppose there were a few parts where you were kind of uncertain of like which notes, I guess, and like, yeah. Yeah. And the intonation. Uh, in parts could be slightly better and also what uh nolan and sean said about dynamics good all right great thank you Rosanna. yeah everyone's got really good comments really really good okay lila let's let's zoom in on a couple of passages here and let's address some of the things that people say i mean overall i i'm on the same page with everybody um obviously you got to work on some of the shifts and one thing i felt as well is that you weren't fully you weren't fully uh, zeroed in on exactly what notes you were trying to find. Like one place I really felt that was here. Um, that, that's natural. Um, you know, what do I always ask you when you're shifting? What's one of the things I always tell you to be aware of? When you're trying um, to be certain where you're going, like yeah, to. Well, position are we in there? Oh, third position. Third position, right? So we're in upper third position. So where's our first finger going to be? Here. Well, if it's upper here. Exactly, right? So our first finger is going to be on D sharp, G sharp, E flat, whichever way you want to look at it. But that's, again, using our position to help us find exactly where we need to go. So, um, 
another so let's let's yeah let's talk about this um again the setting was really nice it was very beautiful um you know it, it just regards the intonation and shifting you said it was really here was it there you said you started to get nervous um i think it was around yeah around there you know because one thing most of the time when you were shifting to this f sharp it was just a hair flat yeah um that always tends to be the case with our fourth finger right got to reach up just a little bit higher um let's try that passage again let's go um mm -hmm. now that we've kind of calmed down right the nerves we broke the ice let's try it again from just from um yeah from the second piece. intonation is better um it wasn't perfect though now what did you hear intonation wise uh in that passage um the shift was spot on by the way the shift was spot on i think the third note the two right here uh was a little bit flat okay you were so the whole step here was a little too long anything else um i don't now, know <laughs> actually Another thing I wanted to make a comment on with this with this phrase is your placement shift between the D's. Now this is always a spot where your intonation, any any um, being off even slightly with your intonation, you have a replacement it sticks out even more. So two D's can, can one after the other. If one a little bit lower, even just by a tiny margin, it really sticks out. So that's a place you have to be careful with. There's two D's going from third to first position, and all oh, yeah. the first finger in first position. That B, remember, what do I always say with the left hand? First finger's lower, fourth finger's higher. Right? Try it one more time with those things in mind. Just take it slightly under tempo as well. finger was a little bit low but the key is how do we get this in context right going from the first note so forget about the rhythm for now and just play them in quarter notes That's right. Do it again. That's perfectly in tune. Now, can you play with the right rhythm? Now, the only change we've really made here is we just established exactly what notes you were going for and what position we were in. I extended third position. You play because those three notes on their own, you can play perfectly in tune, right? There's no problem playing D, E, and F sharp, one extend two four. Now, if you can do that perfectly, there's no reason why you can't do it in the context of the music, right? So sometimes that's all it takes. Just clarify exactly what you're trying to play. Yeah. All right. Very nice. Now, last thing I want to touch on. Can we play, um, you know, the shift, the one at the very end of the, uh, so. you know why can't I get this in tune often is a very simple fact I don't know exactly what note I'm looking for and I haven't diagnosed yet exactly what that is to right so in this case it was your half step shift and your extension the C is really not too hard it's not really what you have to worry about 
Make sure this bottom part's in tune and you can get your harmonic A. If you can do that, the passage will be just fine. All right, so look, you know, one thing to consider as well, before our next lesson, because I'd like to hear this again in our next lesson, study the dynamics, right? Because the thing with, with scores and classical music scores, the composer is often very specific about what they want dynamically, right? Crescendos, day crescendos, hairpins, you know, tons of markings, expressive markings. Go through the score and look, you know, look at exactly what Dvorak intended with this piece and try to in, in, embody that as, as best you can in your playing, right? So that's where the creative aspect of playing comes in, right? It's the dynamic work. It's the expressive and interpretive work that we do that makes the music come alive, right? So Sean was saying, I think Nolan was also saying, was it enough dynamic variation? If there's not enough dynamic variation, often things can start to sound the same, right? And that's one thing we always want to avoid. We don't want, obviously there's some uniform, I don't know what the word would be. I mean, there's some patterns, of course, in the music, but we want variation in the phrase, right? And think of like a sentence, right, in punctuation. Every sentence has a beginning, a middle, and an end. It's the same with a musical phrase, right? There's a beginning, a middle, and an end. Work on those things. Get really picky with your dynamic. Like I said to Apollo, be your own worst critic. You have a great ear, so listen. That's People say, like, how do I get good intonation? It's really a matter of just listening, right? Listening more carefully, right? And diagnosing your problems and coming up with the most efficient solution, right? Okay, good. Lila, thank you, really. You know, really I'm glad you, know, you came through and did this. So, but nice job. Let's give her a round of applause, everybody. Yay! All right. Thank you, Lila. Okay, let's go on to somebody else. So between uh, Nolan and Ozon, who wants to play? I can, I can go next. <laughs> Sorry, what was that? We both volunteered to go next. Okay. <laughs> All right, well, you'll have to play together at the same time in that case. Great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's 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 give it a go. Um, okay. Right, away, take it away.
were pretty good. Yeah. I liked the, I got most of the chords in tune, which was. Okay, good. 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 All right, so look, overall, very, very nicely done. It's not an easy piece. Um, all right, let's, 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 let's go around and see what everyone has to say. Apollo, you want to give a couple comments? Um, yeah, um, it was pretty good. Okay. Uh, I thought there were a few shifts um, that were not um, like fully correct. Gotcha. So a couple intonation issues. All right. Anything else? Not really. Okay. Good. All right. Thank you, Apollo. Uh, Ozon, anything you want to say? Uh, I thought overall it was pretty good. Um, there are a few stutters in places, and as Apollo said, some of the shifts weren't perfect gotcha. but overall i thought it was quite good is this the first time you've heard nolan play uh no okay okay well you guys are in or you're in orchestra again right yeah okay all right <laughs> all right yeah absolutely all right thank you ozan lila um i thought it was really good but some of all the like the shifts were sort of off a little bit but overall it was good so so it looks like that's a trend here so some intonation uh, issues. Um, Sean, anything you'd like to say? Well, I mean, I was actually going to say that the intonation seemed pretty good for the most part. Gotcha. But um, one thing, one thing that I noticed was your vibrato seemed a little, seemed a little like tight. Yeah. They weren't getting like, like, like it wasn't very wide. Gotcha. And something that I think might help with that, and like. Elliot, like Elliot can correct me if I'm wrong, but it's it would be like um, bringing your left elbow up a little more. It seemed like it was kind of low. Absolutely, yeah. So what's funny, Sean, when you first started um, taking lessons, this is something an issue that you were having at first. Yeah, totally. You know, a tight vibrato and a very narrow vibrato, and what happens is it gives you a, a very kind of nervous. Um, uh, I don't know how to describe. It. It's like a nervous kind of sound and not as rich and mellow, which is you know, really the character of the cello. So that's absolutely correct, right? You have to support your elbow, keep your hands tall, everything's squashed down and tight. 
you get that kind of, yeah, very, very narrow, and, and that's something we've been working on together. Um, and these things, they take time, right? They're, they're, they're not short-term fixes, you know? They're changing technique is something, yeah, it takes, takes some time, and a lot of diligent and um, careful work when you're practicing. Good, Sean, really good comments, very nice. Okay, all right, let's, um, let's, let's get back to Nolan here. Um, Nolan, can I, I can't see you right now. Let me see if I can bring this up. Okay, there you are, okay. Um, so overall, um, I thought it was very good. Um, like I said, it's not an easy piece. You did, you know, you handle it very well. You know, it's obviously not, not, not too difficult for you. Um, but it's the same thing we, we've been talking about in our lessons. One, careful with your tempo, right? I, I yeah. feel still a little bit like, you know, you had too much momentum, like you were just out ahead of yourself. It makes things so much more difficult when your tempo is running away from you, right? And it's nervous energy a lot of the times that does that, it causes us to rush and continue to push the tempo. Um, you know, I've been in, and this happens with professionals too, I've been in, you know, orchestra performances where the conductor is nervous and they take a tempo, like it's like the Schumann Second Symphony, like that first movie, there's this really hard, fast, um, famous violin excerpt in it. We started that concert so fast that the violins were just trying to keep up with this tempo, and that's because he was nervous, right? The tempo just started to run away. It happened. So that's one thing, as you get more experience, you just have to tell yourself before, you know, I tell everyone, before you start, make sure you run through that checklist of the things you have to think about in your mind, right? What's my tempo? You know, where are those spots where I got to I gotta be super focused on? Uh, What's my vibrato like? You know, you know, watch my first finger. Whatever it is, you know, make sure you establish it before you start. Right? And, that's, and tempo is one of them. If anything in performance, start a click slower than you're used to, right? Just to make sure you're really comfortable. Because it, it, I'd rather in a performance it be a little on the safe side than not on the safe side, right? You, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's one thing. Um, and another thing in regards to tempo is that you know, if, you're, if your tempo is kind of not steady, you, the difference between your triplets and your duples are going to be a little bit weird, right? It's going to be hard to really nail that down. So in this piece, it's very, very important to make sure that you're not rushing. And there's so many instances where you can, right? Like uh, all this, you know, all these little runs or the... Uh, it was, uh, you know, those can all run away from you. So that's one thing. Um, another thing is, I think all like, you know, the intonation things and the shifting things that people were talking about, that all has to do with tightness, right? Being too tight and too locked down with the elbows. Just open up and stay light. You always want to be, you don't want to feel like you're above the cello, but you want to, you don't want all your weight hanging down off your arms. You don't have as much control in it like this, right? Always, you know, one thing you can do is just pull your arms out like this, right? You can see that there's, there's a, everything gets progressively lower as it gets closer to my hand. Yeah. What you don't want is this, right? There's a sink in my elbow and my hands above my elbow, right? You also don't want this, right? You just want everything just very naturally curved down with the bow being the lowest part. Right? And the left hand, what you don't want as well, you don't want breaks in the wrist. You don't want to be too bent over with the wrist, you know, and everything just supported, you know, basically what you're doing when you're playing the cello is you're supporting these upper arms, right? If, if you're not using your deltoid muscles to hold up these upper arms, you just don't have the control, right? And it just leads to tension. Um, another one is the thumb, right? You know, we always talk about staying tall with the hands. The moment you pinch down like this in either hand, you're just asking for trouble, right? So, that's what you continue to work on in your practices. So a couple of things to focus on. One, watch your first fingers. They all mm -hmm. got to be a little bit lower. Your fourth finger's got to be a little bit higher. Like Sean said, support your elbows, right? Remember, we yeah. always keep talking. Support your elbows in both hands. You're always going to be, you know, your first inclination is going to be do this, right? If you got it, as you're playing, just, just check, in, check in with yourself all the time, right? Always. Where's my elbow? You know, I had an issue like this. Um, I used to keep my shoulders up. I probably told you this. Uh, yeah. You know, like Apollo's age, I was like 12, something like that. You know, 
I would always, anytime I would get into thumb position or a higher position, I would tense up. You know, and if I was playing whatever, maybe the swan, you know, do that. It was just a natural thing. I had to, it was, you know, one thing my teacher was telling me to do at the time was play, you know, and every, I don't know, three or four seconds, stop and check my shoulder. Bring them down. Drop them. See how I'm shrugging and dropping my shoulders? You know, that's, yeah. you know, so as you're playing this, just check your elbows. Where's my elbows? Where's my elbows? It takes that kind of diligence where, and over time, look, these new habits will stick. You know, I always tell this to everybody. It's not about, you know, breaking a habit. It's about replacing it with something better. Like, so in this case, you, know, you have a habit of keeping your elbows too low. You know, the only way to get rid of that is just replace it with giving yourself a habit of keeping your elbows up, right? So, overall, though, it's, it's really, really nice. Um, you know the piece well, you know, so... Um, for now, obviously, at our next lesson, we'll continue on with the second movement. But, you know, look, you know, yeah. you're, you're, you're good to go. Just keep, you know, like I told Lila, just listen, right? Listen more. Mm -hmm. Look, we, but look, you sound great. Uh, thank you for playing, really. Thank you for playing. All right, let's give, let's give Nolan a round of applause. All right. Thank you, Nolan. All right, last but not least, we have Ozon. Uh, what are you going to play for us today again? Uh, the Gavotte in C minor by Bach. Very good. Okay. Yeah. All right. Whenever you're ready, take it away. Okay. C. <laughs> Scales. Gotcha. In front of all the rest of the cellos, yes. All right. So yeah. Good. All right. Well, nicely done. Well done. Um. Okay. 
Uh, so what 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 would you have done differently? What are things that maybe um, if you had another chance to go back, what would you like to fix? Two things. One, dynamics. I could have done more with that. And two, um, it's I still have the I like either over or don't get my fourth finger right. Yeah. Now look, for consistently it was too low, right? Yeah. Like, extensions aren't quite high enough, right? And yeah. Part part what that's partly to do with is when you're going back to your E flat, you're really rotating back, right? You want to even if you're reaching back, you want to extend. You don't want to have to shift. You know, you don't want a lot of play yeah. here, right? Maintain your position while you're playing. We'll we'll talk about that more. So. Mm -hmm. Um, intonation, right? That, that seems like the big, big thing. That seems like the theme of the day. Okay, good. Let's, let's go on. Uh, Nolan, you want to say something? I thought overall it was very good. But, uh, I don't think I really noticed anything except the intonation was, like, consistently on his fourth finger, like, like a quarter note lower, I'd say. Okay, yep, yeah, right. Good. But then besides that, it was very good. All right, good. Thank you, Nolan. Thank you. Um, Apollo, do you want to say something? Um, it was pretty good. But, yeah, I, I agree that um, there could definitely be more dynamics. Mm -hmm. and, yeah, I agree um, as well. Yeah. All right, good. All right, thank you, Apollo. Thank you. Uh, let's see, who's next? Sean, you want to say something? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, wait, hold on. Did we lose Lila? Is she not here? Uh, I, yeah, she, like, left at some point. I don't really uh, know. Let me see. Hey, Lila, I'm sorry. I have to go. Thing. Oh, yeah, so, yeah, she had to leave. All right, no worries. Okay, Sean, um, go ahead. Um, I thought that it was pretty good. I really thought that you, that you like, didn't seem that nervous to me. And, um, some things are, it's, like, well, like, well, like, the intonation, but... It's, it's like not exactly the same intonation problem that uh, some other people have had, because mm -hmm. it seems like you just kind of like drifted, drifted flat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And I noticed that that, that it uh, that it started out pretty good. So I think it might have been when you were extending back, you just didn't come back up all the way. Right. Right. Good. Yeah. Very good. Very good. Yeah, and like, you know, that's just like that's just like practicing the piece and. You know, taking it slow, listening for that, and also doing like, doing like etudes and scales would help with that. Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. Good. I mean, really. I mean, you that was pretty good. Yeah, you've been giving, giving great comments. Um. All right. So let's let's dive into this just a little bit. Um. It was on. So first things first. Um. Let's let's take it from the top, and uh, and I want you to take it slowly. And I want you to listen, just, just focus on, on your intonation. And um, yeah, so let's, let's take it from the top one more time. We're not gonna run the whole piece. Yeah. We're not gonna run the whole thing. I just, I'm gonna yeah. stop you at a couple points. Okay, so right, right away, that's all right. So yeah. 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 be careful. So one thing, if you get your second finger up higher, right, your fourth finger is gonna fall. One thing that's gonna help as well don't stay extended, right? Don't don't stay stretched out like this. When I'm reaching up, I'm rolling back up to help me get up high enough for that fourth finger. If I stay extended like this, right, you're more likely to drag down. So, so make sure you rebalance on your fourth finger as you go up. You're actually a little too low on your E flat as well. I think you're e, you're reaching back. You're trying to get back too far. Simple as that. As simple as that. Um, K 
Can you play me? Last thing we're going to work on, just this passage here. <laughs> issues did you hear anything the shift i guess yeah so the, the first shift was good it actually was it was it was good it was on the way back you're you're once again overcompensating for this extension you're reaching too far between two and one it's not too far <laughs> try again <laughs> Top note, your C, get a little bit higher. Now, what's going to help us do that in fourth position? Uh, I don't know. Oh, yeah, arms. Right, try it one more time. right it's just practice carefully yep. practice slowly practice carefully listen right that's your best tool as a musician is your ear and mm -hmm. it takes time to to develop your ear and know what to listen for and and know when things you know those little micro adjustments that need to be made with your intonation mm -hmm. it takes time to to develop your ear to that point but it happens in your practicing the the real progress happens at home it's in your practicing. And I know not everyone wants to, you know, try to be the next Yo-Yo Ma. That's fine. That's totally fine. But in the time you do spend with your cello, even if it's half an hour a day, right? Even if it's half an hour, just care, you know, the quality of your practice and how careful you practice is far more important than the amount of time you practice. Right? You can get a heck of a lot done in half an hour if you're just really diligent um, and, and just, like I said, being your own worst critic. All right, but listen, everyone, thank you for, for doing this. Uh, everyone did a great job. I mean, the comments, the playing, um, everything was really top-notch. So, you know, I think this is good. I'd love to do this again.